now I'm going to use a brand new unprimed case that has not been um, annealed. These usually work good, they sometimes still split. And if they do, go ahead and anneal it. There, see? Did okay here. But we're going to go ahead and take it one step further. We're going to go ahead and put the um, 375 expander ball button over it. The only other way to do this is if you have like a 4065 Winchester um, expander ball and you can really drop a lot of money into buying all these little accessories but if you get an exotic cartridge like 9.3 is really not all that popular in North America it's still good to invest that money into the parts you're going to need because this brass can be extremely expensive brass for this from Norma is almost if I remember right, um, about 70 cents each. And with 30 out 6 brass picked up off the range, <laughs> you're not going to spend near that. Just a little bit of your time. Besides, the cool factor of being able to convert one cartridge to another makes an interesting talking point on the range. See how I'm doing this gradually? Make sure that shoulder forms real nice. And bring it over the expander wall. Alright, now let's take a look at these three. Let me wipe them off so you get a clear view of these on my, my close-up. Now I need to show you on the close-up what the 9.3 millimeter is going to look like after you fire formed it. And the reason why is um, you can still lose cases in the fire forming process. Most of the time when I lose a case in fire forming is due to a neck split. Sometimes on the shoulder but mostly the neck because this neck is a bit thinner. Okay, I'm going to go from left to right so you see what's really going on here. This is an unaltered 30-06. This is the 9.3 by 62 that we made by passing it over the um, 9.3 expander ball, the 375 expander ball, and the 416, 416 expander ball. This one here was put over the 9.3 and the 375 expander ball, and this has only been put through the 9.3 expander ball. Now, take a real good look at these guys here. If you look, and you have to look kind of close, right there, you see that little shadow right there? It looks like a, like a blemish almost that goes around the case. That's where the original 30-06 shoulder was. And you can see that we moved it forward and increased the angle on it. Now, once this fire formed, it'll just iron this guy out right away. Then you have a good 9.3 by 62 cartridge. Now the fire farming, when you load it up, you absolutely, positively must have um, enough powder and pressure in there in order to iron it out. But you can't use a maximum load. You're going to have to go probably about 80%. Um, my fire farming load is about 3 grains less than the maximum charge. And that's a good place to start. It doesn't overwork the brass, but it still irons out all the wrinkles in it. We still have one step to do. And that's trim. Okay, we have to trim it. I'm going to use my Lyman hand trimmer. And the C clamp to hold it to the pitch. Then what we need to do, you're going to you just can't get a 9.3 pilot, so I'm going to use a 9mm pilot. I'm 
And if you already have a 9.3 by 62 millimeter cartridge that's already set up, you're going to want it because you can use this as a measuring, as a, in order to measure the uh, the cut length. Now, here's the one that's already been fire formed and trimmed. Make sure you check it in, and then this should be loose. Just push it forward until it stops. and then tighten her up. Then we're going to take the 416 one it's not going to really trim that much. It's going to stretch a little bit but more than likely it's going to shrink just slightly under firing. You want this mouth to be uh, square as you can. Just like that. Then you're going to deburr the mouth just like you normally would. Now we have to make sure it chambers in the rifle. Okay. What we need to do now is make sure that these things will chamber. So I have my Seiko 9.3 by 62 here, which is my favorite hunting rifle. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one that's already been fire formed that I know that will work in this rifle. Chamber it, it chambers real smooth. The tolerances are great on this. Now, what you might want to do, and I recommend you do this, is when you size these, back the die off an eighth of a turn, maybe a little less, just so the shoulders is slightly forward. And the reason why is you want the bolt to be just a little tiny bit stiff on there. You want it to be kind of stiff. And the reason is, is you're going to put pressure right here on the shoulder and on the bolt face. That makes sure that the entire cartridge is supported by the chamber. So under fire forming, all those wrinkles are going to iron out. It's going to reduce your risk of a split or a loose cartridge in the chamber and your head face being off. Head space is everything in this game. We're going to make sure every one of them chambers. Get in there. Now, this one's a little stiff. And that's what you want. You want the whole case from the shoulder back to the head to be completely supported. Even though they're wrinkly looking, all that's gonna, all that right there is gonna get ironed out under fire form. And this. These chamber knives, the ones that where the bolt um, takes almost no pressure to close on it, you want to maybe run it back through 375 expander ball and just take your die and back it off like a, like an eighth of a turn. That way you have good pressure from the shoulder to the head. Use your fire forming load. Fire them. Inspect each one when you're done and look for flaws. I got a whole box here and you can see that these were annealed in the same manner that we showed you in the in another segment. And these things are gorgeous. They work great. They say 30 out 6 on them. When people look at them they ask me what it is. Where did I get them and told them that I made them. And you know what? It has a cool factor all to its own.